You cannot have pain. It is not something you can own. You can't possess it. It is not something you can hold on to, grab, protect, and control. You cannot be in pain. It is not something that you can be inside. It is not an entity at all. It is not your pain. And you are not your pain. You are the witness of pain. Each of us has witnessed pain thousands of times in our lives, in other people, in the movies and books we consume. And that personal pain that you witness that's in your body or your mind is similarly just a part of your beautiful story. It is from pain that so much beautiful poetry and art comes from. It is from pain that gives our lives so much meaning and purpose, that makes us cherish joy and the good times because they show us how precious those good times are. And just as we can bear witness to other people's pain, we can bear witness to our own. Welcome to Path to Peace with Todd Perlmutter. I'm your host, Todd Perlmutter. Our world is a projection of our collective consciousness. The more peace we bring into our lives, the more peace we bring into this world. So let the transformation begin. Many people have reached out to me with questions and comments about how can you say that we don't have pain, that suffering exists in the mind, that nothing bad can really happen to us, or that how can you say we live in a perfect universe when there's so much suffering in the world? And so that's what I really want to talk about today. And also, we are putting on eastwesticism.org. That's eastwesticism.org. A free chapter from my book, Aloneness to Oneness. And the chapter is titled, Suffering Exists in the Mind. And this is such an important topic because... It really does go against our way we see the world. It goes against that gut response we have to when we see suffering and when we feel suffering. And when we are in pain, it feels very real. It feels like it is happening to us, to our deepest part of ourselves. And really, it's that pain that makes us look away, prevents us from looking deeper, prevents us from witnessing with peace. And just like we want to look away from a bad injury, you know, we have that gut response when we see an open wound to just look away and shield our eyes. This prevents us from being able to look deeper, to calmly Look at the pain without fear, without resistance. And so we have a misinterpretation of this pain, this thing we can't explore. And so we think that it must be our pain and that it is something to be terrified of and to prevent at all cost, which leads us to having these fears and this constant state of worry where if we're not in pain now, we're worried about getting older (laughs) and we're worried about something that may or may not happen. And so when it comes to pain, the pain is not the suffering. We suffer pain before it happens, during and long after it happens. And so even a brief moment can 
turn into years in our mind that we replay over and over again of not just physical pain, but of how someone wronged us, someone hurt us emotionally, spiritually, psychologically. And because of that, we have constant anxiety, worry, fear, being on edge constantly, and being unable to fully relax and enjoy this brief life we have that is, for most of us, 99.99% of the time, peaceful, calm, pleasant, that so often just gets ruined by our fears and worries, regrets, anger, jealousy, greed, and hatred. We have all experienced painful situations, some more so than others, Everyone's slightly different from each other's. But no matter what you have been through, no matter what you are going through, someone out there has gone through it with peace and optimism. Those feelings of stress and fear are there for a reason. They are necessary to be on high alert until we can get to safety. But most of us have a very hard time turning that internal alarm system off. We have lost the code and forgotten the password. So here is that secret code to unlock and turn off that alarm system, that stress response when we are going through a difficult time. And that is to realize this. Nothing can happen to you. Nothing bad can hurt or damage or harm you in the deepest sense in any way. You just witness. You are safe. The real you is not physical. It is not of this physical realm and universe. That life force energy that animates your physical body is not of this physical world. The consciousness within you that sees your mind, your thoughts, your mental, emotional activity, and that witnesses your physical body from a first person perspective is not physical. It is not subject to the physical laws of this universe. It is not aging or decaying, and it cannot be diminished. Things may happen around you. You may witness physical pain, but you are always whole. Even if you lose an arm, you are a whole and complete person. Life still flows through you unimpeded. Many people who've lost limbs become even more themselves than they were before. They learn new skills, new hobbies, new passions, and develop new abilities. Their life can be imbued with a greater sense of purpose and meaning. Their gratitude for life can reach new heights. Nothing bad can happen to the real you. Everything in life that happens is just the show we get to witness. And it is very exciting. It feels very real. It seems like life and death, but it's just something to be witnessed. And what an exciting show it is. If there was no pain, we would be bored and turn the channel. (laughs) There is no shortage of drama, comedy, or tragedy in this life story on Earth that we get to witness for the blink of an eye in cosmic terms 
but feels so important to us in the moment, as any good show should. Notice we never say, I'm in pleasure, <laughs> or I have pleasure, or that's my pleasure. <laughs> we say, that's my pain, I'm in pain, I have a lot of pain. But we just witness both. We just witness the sensations these bodies feel that signal to our brain what we need to know to survive, to be healthy, and to live in harmony. But when that stress, worry, and fear becomes chronic and constant, we are in deep trouble. And we have to remember that everything is perfect, that we are safe when that danger is over. When we can control something, when we can avoid danger, we do it. When we can get out of a bad situation, we take action and we do it with peace and presence. And then when there is no action to take, we can turn off the worry and the fear and the panic. We do what we can. We take action with stillness inside. We preserve our energy this way and we can take more action because we're not draining ourselves in the action. We stay wise because we are not blinded by fear and panic. And we remember that we are always safe. This universe is not some cosmic joke, a practical joke or a trick <laughs> on us. It is here for us by us. We are the universe. And these amazing bodies have defense mechanisms. And when the pain is too great, our bodies go into shock and we become numb. And when the system stops working, we get to shed these bodies and return to oneness. And here is why I am quite confident that both life and death are perfectly safe. Because what we know for sure is that when we die, our brains produce DMT, which we know what that does. We know the experience of DMT. And that is that no matter what you are worried about, no matter what fears you have, no matter what pressures and worries and life dramas that you are engaged in or worried about your family and how they'll be taken care of. All of that fades away when this DMT is released in our brain and we are overcome with love and gratitude and beauty. And all of that pain and worry and suffering slips away as we are engulfed in love. And we finally see that all that truly mattered was love. So whatever we are suffering, whatever pains we are going through, we can look instead of turn away. And we can love instead of hate, fear, and worry. And what other way really is there to go through life, through those ups and through those downs and scary times, but with love and peace? We will witness pain, our own and our loved ones. But it is the mind that resists it. It is the mind that kicks and screams and demands that the universe take it away, that screams, why me? It's not fair. And how could this happen? The pain is real. And the suffering that we feel is real. But the suffering is created in the mind. And it most often stems from our expectations. Expectations of others 
expectations of the universe and how life should be. We know that everyone dies. We know that many are taken too soon. And yet, we expect that that should not happen to us or our loved ones. We expect other people to treat us with integrity and kindness, and yet we know that there's a great number of people out there who are dishonest and who do not treat others with kindness and integrity. Expectations are like going to a movie and hoping that it goes just like you have it in your head and thinking you know better than the screenwriter and the director. But that would be a very boring movie and we would walk out (laughs) halfway through and we'd uh, demand our money back. (laughs) So we have no choice but to trust this big, beautiful universe. Understand that what is given will be taken away, but it is not malevolent. And as hard as it can feel when we are really suffering, it's important to not change our thoughts, but just notice how our thoughts look to the negative and obsess over what we have that is unpleasurable and what we don't have that we desire. Notice how we forget that the world is full of great people, people who will surprise you, but only if we let go of those expectations, because this is how true friendships and relationships can be developed, because expectations immediately imply your superiority over someone else and that your demand for others to behave the way you believe they should. Instead of understanding the causes and effects in their life that make them choose what they choose. And so expectations, whether they are towards other people or the universe entirely, is essentially a form of trying to dominate and to exert control over something we have no control over. It makes relationships transactional and always needing, demanding, and requiring of others, which forces others to take a position either for or against. And no one is just being together and being in that space of love with each other, with mutual respect and admiration. Not everyone will be receptive to this energy, but by developing that selfless love that has no requirement, expectation, or demand, we find those people who do reciprocate because we are not requiring it. And they are giving selflessly And we are giving selflessly. And you will be amazed at how many people reveal their goodness this way. We so often see only people's negative qualities. Whether it is celebrities, politicians, neighbors. We look at that 1% of their imperfection and it becomes all we see. And as so often happens, we look at ourselves with the same gaze because that is how we see the world in ourselves. When we flip that around and we see people's tremendous qualities, the darkness in our lives gets lifted immediately. And we begin to realize that people aren't bad. They are suffering. They are lacking in awareness of our deep connection and oneness. And simply by seeing the oneness, we can see others with love because that is what inevitably 
happens when we see ourselves in others and others in ourselves. Instead of seeing others as enemies, we see the world as our family. Full of, of course, that crazy uncle. <laughs> Full of, you know, traumatized and troubled people. But it is through this lens that we can do our part to make the world a better place. To try to reduce and eliminate that needless suffering in the world. And we start simply by practicing to sit as the witness, to peacefully watch what we want to look away from, that pain in our lives, to accept it, to live with it instead of fighting it, and to recognize that formless, non-physical dimension within you. Your true self, that spark of life, that is infinite and eternal, that is impenetrable from anything in this physical world, that nothing can harm and nothing can disturb. Being that witnessing presence is the medicine to heal any pain and suffering, any anxiety, fears, worries, resentments. We don't often get a chance to experience pain that is lasting long enough that we can actually explore it. Usually it's very brief and we turn away with our head and we close our eyes and we almost have an out of body experience, the opposite of being a present witness. But sometimes we can notice ourselves getting caught up in an emotional and mental story that takes over our presence where we lose ourselves and we allow our bodies and minds to go into that panic response. But just by noticing it, we can snap ourselves out. We can look at the pain and notice that it is not so unbearable that we can bear witness and overcome it. We can look at it and overcome the fear. And this diminishes that sensation of pain and suffering. This is something the ancient spiritual martial artists all discovered, which was that ability to withstand pain, be present for their pain, and to stay calm, stay still, and just witness. And we can all do this in any moment where we feel overcome with worries and fears and negativities. Instead of mentally running away, look towards and go deeper. That is where the healing takes place. It can even be something as small as social anxiety, where we just notice, oh, there's people, there's a person that I like or whatever, and I'm freaking out. <laughs> I'm getting nervous, tensing up. And we just witness that. And we witness how silly it is for another human, another life force like ours, to make us self-conscious and insecure. Whatever you're afraid of, that fear disappears the moment you stop running away and start moving towards with your present moment awareness. It is truly your light of consciousness that is the disinfectant for all our ills. The real you is fearless and invincible. Just as it's not your pain, it is not your fear. You just witness it. And just by witnessing it, you create space between the fear and the pain and your true self, and you no longer fear 
the fear. And you no longer are the pain. And you know, deep down, that there is nothing to be truly afraid of. Nothing so terrible that you cannot bear. And you can just appreciate this rich tapestry of life that you get to witness. Much love. And to go deeper in this topic, you can go to eastwesticism.org and download that free chapter from Aloneness to Oneness titled Suffering Exists in the Mind. Hope you enjoy it. You have been listening to Path to Peace with Todd Perlmutter. Being here and putting in this important and noble work is one of the greatest gifts you can give yourself and others. If you found this podcast even a little helpful, please make sure to leave a review so it can reach others who may be in need. And remember, the path to peace starts with a single step.